Today, we're going to be talking about lithium withdrawal. My name is Lyle Murphy, the founder of the Alternative to Med Center. Uh, first question is, what is lithium? Well, oddly enough, this is a drug that's been around for uh, not quite 100 years, but a long time, since the 50s. And I don't know that anyone really has a great answer for that. So I'm not going to act as if I have the best answer for that. But lithium is a mineral salt, and it is a trace mineral in certain amounts. And in higher amounts, it could be considered um, toxic, specifically neurotoxic. Um, question number two, what is lithium used for? Well, lithium is generally used in conjunction with antipsychotics as a mood stabilizer. So for instance, somebody gets put on uh, Risperdal, which is an antipsychotic, or Zyprexa, or Abilify. So you've got the antipsychotic, and generally they'll, they'll tow in um, lithium along with it. Sometimes lithium could be used as a standalone for uh, mood stabilization in people who have bipolar sort of presentations. Um, it's considered to be a lot less um, um, toxic than, or at least neuroleptically scrambling than an antipsychotic. And so a practitioner may want to start with lithium. It's got a long history and um, it, um, you know, it may not be um, maybe the lesser of many evils. Um, question number three, why does lithium work? Well, again, I don't know that anyone's really answered that question to my satisfaction, but I have a hypothesis that, um, that I believe, and it's based on a preponderance of, of some clinical um, observations to support it. But lithium is a mineral. And when we are mineral deficient, which we are in our society, our, our society is, well, any industrialized society, when you're growing food over and over and over again on the same soil, you're going to pull the minerals out. It's just the way it is. So for instance, the magnesium content of our spinach today is approximately 1 30th, excuse me, 1 40th of what it was in the 30s. They found a can of, of spinach back from the 30s. They tested its magnesium levels and found that it was substantially higher than it is now. Well, that applies to all the trace minerals as well. I believe that lithium is a trace mineral that when you give somebody the lithium, it fills certain valences. In other words, the lithium is very similar to other trace minerals that the lithium sort of been covering for. So let's say the lithium has been sort of trying to do the job of a molybdenum or a cobalt or something that's in micro amounts, and you replenish that a little bit, you might get some other physiological functioning from those trace minerals. Um, so it could be supplying, you know, needed trace minerals of a certain um, ionic uh, you know, charge to be able to perform a whole host of metabolic, physiological, and neurological functions. Um, Question number four, uh, what is a demonstrable side effect of lithium? Well, one of the big challenges with lithium carbonate is in those levels, it can be toxic. And when a person goes neurotoxic from lithium, it may be reversible, but it also may not be reversible. Um, so having tremors, having a hard time walking, um, having seizure-like activity happen, not full seizures, but seizures that are happening maybe in a part of the body. Um, they, it's called clonus. Um, and then there's the renal failure. Um, that this, this stuff is, can be hard on the kidneys. And also um, the neurotoxicity that can happen in the nervous system. I mean, these are definitely huge considerations. Um, even for a drug that's considered more safe like lithium, I mean, when you have a bad reaction to this sort of thing, or you get you know, uh, an escalated levels of lithium, it can be hugely problematic. Um, question number five, what does lithium withdrawal look like? Um, honestly, lithium withdrawal is when we started getting, we, when we started this you know, over 15 years ago, no one really had information about how to do these medication withdrawals. It was literally a ghost town of information. So lithium withdrawal is, is one that we got right early. It was one of the ones that um, 
you know, our first guess was actually the right guess on how to do it and has been working well since. So I don't see crazy lithium withdrawals here, but I have certainly heard of, uh, of them. And when people call and they said they have gone off of it, what that looks like for them. And by and large, it, it looks like they go back into having bipolar symptoms. It's sort of like, um, it's sort of like the glue that may have been holding someone together comes unglued. And, um, does that mean that they need the medication for life? No, that hasn't been my experience, but that's what the withdrawals can look like is that a person, um, can escalate in a way that looks like um, having a manic episode. And it may not happen just right after the withdrawal. It could take a month or two for that to happen. So I don't mean to put the fear of God into people to not try to undergo this withdrawal. But I'm going to get into the next question, um, <clears throat> question number six, that might help alleviate some of the fears. So number six, what? how does ATMC support lithium withdrawal? Well, I mean, there's the fundamental things that we do where we're unpoisoning people's nervous system of neurotoxin, neurotoxins using specific um, um, antioxidants like glutathione, <clears throat> biotransforming out some um, organic poisons like pesticides and, and volatile organic compounds and xenobiotics and hormone mimickers and endocrine disruptors and yada, yada, yada. We're doing that piece, that environmental medicine piece. Um, but really what's specific to a, um, a uh, lithium withdrawal is we, um, we use lithium orotate. So we, when you start withdrawing the lithium, you know, you get to a point on the blood test where you're not hitting the therapeutic dose anymore. That's about the time you might want to start using lithium orotate. So let's say you're on 1200 milligrams of, of, of lithium. Maybe the time you get down to maybe 600 or 750, somewhere in there, that's when you might want to use one lithium orotate. And then each 150 you draw back, um, you would add five more milligrams of lithium orotate, with a maximum being around 25. Um, I wouldn't suggest anyone outpatient go over that, especially if you don't have somebody that's supporting you out there, uh, and watching you and you know, checking your lith levels and all that. Um, lithium orotate doesn't have the toxicity value of, of lithium carbonate, unless you use it in ridiculously high doses and you use it in ridiculously high doses. They did do a study with rats. Rats have the detoxification genetics of Superman, literally. I mean, these animals live in sewers. So their ability to clear things is a lot um, better than humans, but they still managed to poison one with a ridiculous amount of lithium orotate and um, do renal damage to the kidneys. So um, uh, you you know, it, 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 it's, it's, our experience has been that the lithium orotate is a lot better tolerated and it's a lot less dosage than the lithium carbonate. The lithium carbonate can certainly be problematic, whereas the lithium orotate almost invariably is not. Um, the other thing, it's sort of like the special spice that makes this work. Now, with the theory I mentioned earlier about the mineral deficiency, right? So instead of just adding lithium, add the whole panoply, bring in the whole family of, of, of trace minerals. These trace mineral complexes, one of the ones I like the best is called thorn trace minerals. Taking thorn trace minerals, supporting the withdrawal with lithium orotate is really sort of the laser pointer that hits that one specifically. Not saying that you would do that just in absence of other things. There's definitely other things you want to do to support a withdrawal. Um, namely, setting aside the time to do a withdrawal, making sure that you're going slow enough to that you can integrate um, the new levels without it being catastrophic, being respectful of menstrual cycles. Menstrual cycles can definitely combine with a um, and certain certain you know people with certain genetic um, dispositions, especially if they have what's called this the catecholamine methyltransferase genetic polymorphism, since it has to deal with estradiol and the estradiol not getting broke down could be very stimulating. You know, maybe not combining the withdrawal timing right about when you're going to have a uh, menstrual cycle, or at least when you do a menstrual cycle, not forcing yourself to, to go to work and please the boss and drinking more caffeine and stuff to try to muscle through it, but actually taking that time to create a sacred environment for yourself where you're meditating or singing or whatever sort of relaxed thing 
um, works for you and being okay telling the world to just go on pause and leave you alone. Even if that means your kids going off to their grandmothers, whatever that is, this is a sacred time for you that needs to be respected. And, and if you're going to do this, do you want to give yourself the advantages of the space and container for this healing to occur? Um, I look forward to any more questions you might have. You're welcome to call the number that you see on this page. And you could get one of our admissions counselors to help you navigate your way to the center or even to help you find some help and support out there in the professional community. Thank you very much. Have a great uh, day or evening, and um, I wish you well.